Hello everybody and welcome to this exam question walkthrough for the A-level chemistry topic Equilibrium Constant KP. Feel free to download the question in the description, have a go at it yourself and watch this video to see how you got on. In this video I will be modelling the thinking behind the question and writing that down in blue and then the answers that are going to get you the actual marks will be written in purple. This question is about the equilibrium shown here. On the left hand side we've got two moles of SO2 gas and one mole of oxygen gas and then we're shown that it's a reversible reaction and we've got two moles of SO3 gas. State and explain the effect, if any, of a decrease in the overall pressure on the equilibrium yield of SO3. This is a really common question and I actually feel that it's easier to tackle the explanation part and arrive at the effect once you're happy with your explanation. And so obviously this is to do with Le Chatelier's principle, which covers the idea that the equilibrium is going to shift to oppose the applied change. And since we're decreasing the overall pressure, the equilibrium is going to shift to increase the pressure. And that will be the first explanation mark. And then we need to inspect the equation and decide which side will have the higher pressure. And so since there are three moles on the left hand side and two moles on the right hand side, the left hand side will have a higher pressure because more moles of gas means higher pressure and fewer moles of gas means less pressure. And so since we're saying that the equilibrium is going to shift to raise that pressure back up, that means it will shift to the left hand side because there are more moles on the left hand side. And then now we can go back to our conclusion, which is the effect, which is that since it is shifting left, that means it will be using up the SO3 to create those things that are shown as reactants. And so the yield will decrease. In part B, we're told that a 0.460 mole sample of SO2 is mixed with a 0.25 mole sample of O2 in a sealed container. That means it's a closed system at a constant temperature. When equilibrium is reached at a pressure of 215 kilopascals, the mixture contains 0.180 moles of SO3. And we're commanded to calculate the partial pressure in kilopascals of SO2 in the equilibrium mixture. Well, first of all, what we need to do is we need to work out what the equilibrium moles will be for these chemicals. And so I would do this in an exam, I'd do this probably in and around the equation at the top here, but I'm going to write the equation out again. And then we're going to work out what the initial moles are, so that's what the I on the left hand side is showing. So we've got 0.46 of SO2, 0.25 of O2, and since we've not been told anything about it, we assume that we've got zero moles of SO3. And then I always leave a little bit of a space, which I'll come back to in a moment, and I work out what the equilibrium moles are going to be. So we know that SO3 at equilibrium is 0.18 moles. And that's the key to unlocking the rest of the values. We started with zero moles of SO3, and we've gone to 0.18 moles of SO3. So that has increased by 0.18. So that is the change. And so I always put a C on the left hand side for the change. Now, since the coefficients in this equation are 2 to 1 to 2, that means that the SO3 will go up the same amount of moles that the SO2 went down. So namely 0.18. So that means that the SO2 will go down 0.18 from 0.46 and so it will end up at 0.28 moles and that will actually be our first mark here but we've done a lot of the thinking and then since the coefficients the ratio of SO2's decrease to oxygen's decrease is 2 to 1 that means that oxygen will only go down by half as much as the SO2 went down so in other words it will decrease by 0.09 and so we will end up with 0.16 moles of oxygen at equilibrium and so that will be our second mark Next, we have to remember that all gases behave ideally. So in other words, the pressure that they exert on their container is directly proportional to the number of moles that there are. So in other words, in our mixture, we've got a certain number of moles of each of our three gases, and together, those three moles are giving us a pressure of 215 kilopascals. 
And so to calculate what the partial pressure is, we need to work out what fraction of the total moles our particular gas is, so specifically our SO2. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work out what our mole fraction is. And so to do that, we need to work out what the total equilibrium moles is by summing our 0 0.28, 0 0.16 and 0.18. And that gives us an answer of 0.62 moles. That will be mark point number three. And so the SO2 mole fraction is 0 0.28 out of our total 0 0.62. And we don't actually need to calculate this value because what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply this fraction by the total pressure, 215, to arrive at the partial pressure for SO2. And this gives us an answer of 97.1 kilopascals or 97 kilopascals. The precision isn't too important because we haven't been told to give a particular number of significant figures, although all of the data given so far is to three significant figures. So 97.1, probably slightly better. A different mixture of SO2 and oxygen reaches equilibrium at a different pressure. The table below shows the partial pressures of the gases at equilibrium. Give an expression for the equilibrium constant Kp for this reaction and calculate the value of the equilibrium constant and give its units. So the expression for Kp tells you a numerical value that is the relationship between the partial pressure of the products compared to the reactants. So to construct this, what we always need to do is we need to refer to the equation. So I've rewritten that along the top. And so you always take the products and put that on the top of the expression. And so you write the partial pressure of SO3. Now the coefficient in the equation is a two in front of the SO3. So this needs to be squared. I usually like to put brackets around the partial pressure term when I'm squaring it in particular, just so I can get that differentiation between the three of the SO3 and the two for the squared. And then we put the reactants on the bottom. And so the reactants are the SO2 and the O2. So we put the partial pressures of each of those. And since the coefficient for SO2 is also a two, this value needs to be squared as well. So then that's the expression, that's the first mark. Then we substitute these values in, then we run the calculations and we get a value for Kp of 1.20 times 10 to the minus two. 1.2, absolutely fine. No significant figures have been specified here. And then the units, we've got two partial pressure terms on the top, so that's kilopascals multiplied by kilopascals, and we've got three partial pressure terms on the bottom, so that's kilopascals three times along the bottom. These will obviously simplify down, the first two will cancel, then the next two will cancel, and so we're left with one divided by kilopascals. We always have to have the units on the top line, so we bring them from the bottom line up to the top. When we do that, we invert the powers. So kilopascals on the bottom of the expression becomes kilopascals to the minus one on the top. And so that's the units for this particular KC expression, kilopascals to the minus one. And then in part D, the final bit of this question, we are asked, what is the effect on the value of Kp if the pressure of this equilibrium mixture is increased at constant temperature? And so actually this is a really fast question because the only thing that affects the actual value of Kp is temperature. It might increase it, it might decrease it. That's something that we have to decide on a case by case basis. But when we're asked about a change in pressure, the answer is no effect on the value of Kp. And that's the same for changing concentration and changing catalysts as well. The reason that Kp will not change is if we increase the pressure, what that will do is that will proportionately increase the partial pressure. Now, since there's more terms on the bottom of this expression than on the top, we might think that Kp should decrease. But the equilibrium is going to shift to respond to this pressure increase. And so it will actually shift to the right hand side. And what that will do is that will increase the partial pressure of SO3. And so we might think that the Kp value should increase as a result of that conclusion. And actually what happens is those two consequences will cancel each other out perfectly and arrive at us having no overall effect on the value of Kp. And so the correct answer is that Kp will stay the same. 
Okay, that's the end of this question and the end of the video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.